great. Well, I'd like to call the meeting of the Pound County Senior Center Board of Oversight uh, to uh, to order. Right, right at uh, ten oh seven. Um, the meeting guidelines. They'll be here, so travel with okay. it. So, well, <laughs> okay, speak one at a time and follow the code of uh, conduct and respect with considerate courteous, concise, and non repetitive. And uh, so, if I get to be repetitive, just wag your finger at me. <laughs> okay, uh, the members present, we've got uh, Doug and Trevor and Joyce, yeah. as well as Jen, who are one of the board of uh, oversight plus our directors. Um, so, we have Two minutes from two meetings to approve. I would like to hear a motion on those. Mo motion to approve the minutes for August 3rd, 2024. Sorry. Okay. Any other discussion? Yep. Um, uh, all those in favor? Joyce, aye. aye. All right. Okay. Great. And there's another. Make a motion to approve the minutes for August 14th, 2024. Okay. Um, okay. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Good. Um, so we've got, um, uh, did I get meeting guidelines? Did I get, like, just go past public? Yeah, but no, 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 no. There we go. I didn't <laughs> Public comment. Um, so this is the time for members of the public to make comments on things not related to things that are on the agenda. The agenda has both a feasibility study discussion, getting everybody up to date on that, and a consortium agreement discussion. Um, I don't know of any unanticipated items. And the only one is going to be the PBTA. There's a, 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 uh, there's a PBTA document that we have to list that. Yep. Um, so is there any member of the public here who has something they want to bring up outside of those? Yes, ma'am. And, and, and say who you are, because I forget names for really soon. <laughs> That's a place send a lot. <laughs> I'm Camille Miss Uh-huh. Um, Camille? Yeah, Camille. Um, and I just wanted to, can I just start now? Uh, yep, yeah. oh. and I'll give you like two minutes. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, comment on the um, the cost of the exercise programs and all. And I know it's been put on hold um, because the grant came through again. Um or new renewal came through. So I just want to throw some ideas out there. Um, so if it comes up again, it's not like a mm. quick rush to do anything. Um, and I know that by 7th 13th, we had already lost three classes, exercise classes, for one reason or another. So that's why, you know, I don't think the idea of um, a monthly pass is not good because, and I know that the idea came over that balanced classes would be carried over. Um, so I was just, you know, I'd done some thinking and I thought that um, it had been mentioned that, you know, like someone could go to the 20 classes with the $25 pass, whether it was the yoga center or Waitley, and that wasn't counting Tai Chi. So keeping that in mind, it would seem that like a 20 pass for $25. $5 would be just a good idea for everybody. That way we wouldn't be all rushing the Tom at the beginning of the month to get a new pass, either before or after class. And he could just sort of initial each pass. And once we reach 20, no matter where it was, he would do for a new class. Um, and that way I thought it would just be more equitable for everybody as opposed to Joe Schnell being Go, go 20 classes and I would only make like 15 or something or 10 for that same money. This way we'd all have, we'd all be paying the same thing. And uh, like I said, that's not even counting when Tai Chi was brought up that they might have to, they might lose their grant as well. Mm. And that's an, another um, option to come up. So but, I just thought this way it wouldn't be locked into a month. We all wouldn't be rushing to renew at the same time, um, and it would it would accommodate class, classes that are canceled for whatever reason, like the town hall has its elections, and that's fine. I mean, that's what the town hall is for. Right. Um, but, um, you know, the other day they went to uh, the, the, the expo thing, and that's fine. That's what the senior center is for, oh, um, okay. to, you know, do all that. And so, but this way, nobody would lose out. We'd all be... Doing what we want to do with the seniors. Oh, it sounds like something we probably ought to consider. Um, and it's been about two minutes. So uh, I feel like I have the gist of your idea. Um, mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask Camille about 
this idea. Because I feel like we probably can't take it up and make any decisions about that today. Because I would really want like the staff yeah. and Chen to kind of consider that and because they see more than we do. That's why I wanted to bring it yeah. up. So, and if you so want to talk perfect. with me, just let me know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, the, if, if, when it's yeah, time any, yeah. any questions that I just want wanted to throw it out before. Yes. Because I've had the, I've sort of had that yoga pass, but it was never one where you could go like to different places. And I think that's an interesting way to kind of simplify things, but I want to know what. <laughs> I, had, I had mentioned it as yeah. being an alternative, and what oh. Camille is saying is that because some, from my understanding of what you're saying now, is that um, you're feeling that it shouldn't should be available for every class. The only reason that Tai Chi and one of the other classes weren't included is because at the point in time where it was presented, is they still had grant money under a different grant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as I, you know, as I tried to explain. <laughs> There are multiple grants. It's not just one grant and they cover certain things versus others. So we're going to get into that more. Um, over. That's why I said yeah. for the ones who need it, like Tai Chi wasn't included because they didn't need it. Right. That's why it would include those who needed it. And yeah. if that but, came up, you just speak. Okay. No, Thank that's you. great. Thank, Thank you for bringing it today. Pulling that idea up. Okay. okay. That's great. Okay. Anybody else have? Empty, <laughs> empty seat. <laughs> right, right. Okay, all right. Okay, very good, very good. Um, now the feasibility study discussion. Um, we are at the point in the feasibility study where um, the the consultants have uh, basically come up with some price tags that you will all you'll you'll either well uh, I can't really say that I'm recording. Uh, it, 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 it may cause you know some heart trouble <laughs> if you actually take the numbers really seriously at this point. Uh, but the, I've got uh, there's a set of drawings and numbers, um, and they're mainly meant for comparison with each other. And uh, uh, the other uh, bit of comparison is with the needs. Um, so the consultants have uh, included based on our discussions of what kind of programming we want. Um, that we would need a really huge, huge senior center to take care of all the things. We so we took the uh, programming or the things we want to have in a senior center and put them into three categories, um, high priority, medium priority, and low priority. And when I look at it, it's like, if we want to grow, we need both the high and the medium. Yeah. And the low are, the really, are really things like that. That'd be nice, but you know, we, we could do we could do without the low priority things. And there weren't that many things in the low priority because the people talked about were things that were high priorities. And it was really hard to decide sometimes between high and medium things. But um, in round numbers, we need 7,500 square feet just for the high priority items. We need about the same, about 7,500 square feet for the medium priorities. And it was a couple thousand square feet. I don't remember the number anymore because in my mind, the low priority things just went off the edge when we realized we need 15,000 square feet of space to do what we really want to do and to serve our community the way we're, not just like the things we're scraping by with now, but to uh, have our own space for exercise to not have to rely on um, other spaces for that. Um, because there are problems, like, like, like one of the ones that they brought up at least, uh, that those spaces are really community spaces. But on the other hand, like for example, oh, we could have a gymnasium. Well, we really need a gymnasium. There are four gymnasiums in our community. If we need a big gymnasium for something, we can get one for, for an occasion that really needs one. But, for everyday exercise classes, which are really amazing, we probably need our own space, which would not be a gymnasium, it would be a small space. So we, we've, we've spent at least three meetings talking about the needs and how big uh, different spaces would need to be to serve uh, our uh, what we expect to be our population uh, in all these classes. And, the technology classes that don't need a gymnasium, uh, 
kitchen space and community meal space and just we really went through it again and these folks know there's some new centers so they've done this kind of thing before right but they brought up things that we hadn't thought of and uh we talked about where those priorities were done so that part has been done and the number you have to remember is we want to do this right we need fifteen thousand square feet to do it so they looked at the three sites and uh, trying to figure out how do we get 15,000 square feet out of those. And the other target they had was like somewhere in their mind, they said, well, you know, he really had to only do the high priority. You need something like seven or eight square feet. What are your options there? Um, so if we look at the three sites without considering any new building, the uh, church in South Deerfield could get us about 7,600 square feet uh, by just renovating the space that's there, okay? So if renovating the church is the way we want to go, it's only going to serve the high priority needs. And some of those medium ones are like really near and dear to us. So I'm not particularly comfortable with that. Um, if we only use the existing space and weight, it'd be much worse. It's only 5,000 square feet there. And so you really couldn't um, do anything with that site unless you were to build onto it. Now, luckily there, there's space to build on. Um, the site in Sunderland on Plum Tree Road uh, has uh, about 12,000 square feet, which would by itself serve the needs, our high priority needs and some of the medium priority needs in all likelihood. Now, in none of these spaces did they go in and do specific this is how I'm laying out the classroom, and this is going to be the walking track. And none of that is laid out. They're really doing all of these from a, kind of a very high level. Um, and they're uh, so we're just in the top of the shop perfect as well. Um, but, and, and from their point of view, none of them have adequate parking. <laughs> and at one point, I just know all these guys said, you know, yes, if there's a big event at the library, then yeah, there'll be more cars, but if you're sharing parking, yeah, that, that could be a problem sometimes, but have we have we never parked on the grass for town meeting? <laughs> we have to right. do it all the time. So I, 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 I'm not as worried about parking as they are because at all of the sites, there were ways to expand the parking enough to get us close to what we ought to be looking for. So I agree. Yeah. So yeah. To, and so we asked them to to um, let's look at all of these sites. Um, how would you get them to fifteen thousand square feet? And pie in the sky, you know, just using numbers like how many how many hundreds of dollars per square foot does it cost to renovate an old building? How many dollars per square foot for a new building like the Plum Tree Road? How many dollars per square foot for like an empty shell? Which is what we had done. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, uh, they in, in Deerfield they said we're not going to get to the two thousand square feet if we're only renting. Right. So they made a proposal. Uh, well, if you were to tear that down and use that footprint to build either a one story or a two story, mm -hmm. the one story would would just give you eight thousand square feet. Yeah, the two story would give you everything. Everything done. Okay. Then um, same thing in. Uh, Waitley, uh, what would it take to renovate what you have indoors and then help build on more new because there is a plenty of land there to expand into. And then Plum Tree Road has the smallest amount of new build because it's already got the biggest room in space. So they went through and they, they put in numbers and I'm just, I, I'm, I'm afraid to say them out loud. Yes. Don't be. I mean, the cost of everything yeah. has, has gone up right, right. since COVID so, um, with the demand. Well, for the most part, these are looking at the total after they figure in contingency and everything are more or less a thousand dollars a square foot. So there's yeah, so a fifteen million dollars oh. to get a fifteen thousand square foot facility. <laughs> now, if you look at the details, tearing down a building in Deerfield. And building something new on top of it, that's actually 16 million. We need you. And, and if you look in Waitley, that's 15 million. If you look in Sunderland, um, including uh, a price, assuming we can buy it for one and a half million, it's really uh, 
14 million. 14 okay. million. Yeah. So when I say 15 million, I feel like the 14 million, 15 million, 16 million, because this is such a, like a bird's eye view, the difference between those prices is not that important. Um, I think the, uh, and the difference in like the availability of parking, because I think on all of those sites, we have ways to deal with either expand existing parking uh, or, you know, pave, pave a little bit in Waitley of some of the grassy area. I think that that's not the deciding thing. Um, what we have to decide or recommend, I think, uh, because I don't think we are the people who are directing these building study. Um, I think we made the recommendation. They will give us on this feasibility study a more detailed plan for two of the locations. So we have to basically recommend which of these three sites is most worth looking into. And um, that's been, I don't know if we'll be we'll into that whole long meeting, but I hope it's something we can we can uh, discuss in great detail. So with that as kind of my read on the numbers they gave us, I did make a document that has all those numbers and the pictures of kind of what goes with it. Um, and I, that, I can share that up here, but I'm not sure how helpful that will be for everyone. Um, the, to me, one of the first questions is, is there any stomach for tearing down their building? You would do it in our So, if, as I continue to look at the dictator for the deer kid, right? Exactly. Would tear it down. And I would be cast out next. I would be too big at that building. I understand it has a lot of memories, but the structural stability underneath when you look at everything and one thing that chris wanty um who's the person you've been working with yeah. from edm studio shared is there's a lot of of structural pieces that are there's gaps in the beams in the basement it's in it's, and it was built on and look we're not we're not working for a community that lived 150 years ago we are trying to provide services for the community that we have now and it is going to be here in the for future. the next 50 years yeah i mean yeah while well, it would be wonderful to have an old church that didn't become an admirer that doesn't really serve much purpose uh we don't have any use for it really sure we could have a couple of dinners there but while we're lacking this major need for our seniors in town we'd be looking at an empty shell of a building that might get used a few times a year we need to find that, use that space that we have that's vital in the downtown area if this was the spot to provide services for our seniors going forward. And that's just it. You know, and again, I don't know why, how how else to get around the fact that we're moving into the future and not living in the past. We, you know, we can have old deer field. We have a lot of things to go look at. It would be wonderful to keep it if it was structurally sound. But it really isn't. I mean, you can't put a second floor in that building. It's cavernous and large. It's not well insulated, not good. I mean, every contractor that's looked at that said, you need to take it down. And the only people who want to hang on to it were the people that like the historical value of it, which I would get if we had multiple other spots to build. But we don't. So yeah. I would make the case. I don't know if it would win, but yeah. I think it's worth talking uh, about. Because yeah, I think just remodeling it doesn't get us the square footage that yeah. we need. So I guess, I, I, let me put this out and see if you agree with the statement that the Board of Oversight would not recommend simply remodeling the existing building to take care of our high priority needs, right. because we really, really need to take care of more than that. We need to we need to go into that medium column. I mean, that, and, that's why, and that's really up to the towns, the three towns. Do we want to make this leap and make this for the future? Yeah. Or are we going to limp along like we have for many, many years with well, not surviving? Our job is to recommend. Correct. Are we agreed on a recommendation like that? Yeah. yeah. That if we were to try to house our senior center, in Liverpool, it would have to be with the church school dead. Mm -hmm. So then, and then rebuilding on that site, it would be two stories to get the amount of mm -hmm. square footage we need. It would have a smaller amount of green space than would be available at either Plum Tree Road or Waitley. Um, but it would, there's still, there's still some green space there, and there's 
parks nearby. Right. Brian, so, another question or comment? Um, if, I don't know. Uh, if that. With Trevor mainly, what's going on with the St. James property? Uh, possible senior housing. Okay, so would it be possible to turn down the congregational church and put senior housing there and the senior center? I mean, it's a whole different plan, but that would put the seniors closer to town. Yeah. Um, that live in, you know, that live there because everybody isn't very mobile at times. It, it's a thought, it just mm -hmm. hasn't been part of that discussion right. and study and all of that. So I don't know. Well, that's too bad. And what, what's the kind of the renovating the uh, 1888 residence? That's going to be about seven million. We have a four million dollar grant and we have CBA funds for the other three weeks, something. So no million. taxes. Revenue that were raised. Uh, right. Other, other than CPA, other than CPA, CPA which, yeah, which was taxes. <laughs> but, yeah. And and state revenue. And that includes the addition. To that it. includes the addition. For so, the in yeah. hindsight, it's too bad that wasn't done from the senior center at the same year. Mm -hmm. Because that's half, almost half of what right. you're talking about. Bringing some yeah. Yeah. But at that point, I think that the uh, building would not be um, uh, enough square footage either. Yes. Yeah, the just on the yes. inside. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so the to the to me the main drawback of telling our associates, hey, give us some detail about a new building uh, that would be eight thousand mm -hmm. and eight thousand square feet. Um, my main hesitation is how long before we know whether that building can actually be turned back? Because I know you've put some money into it you know, uh, in the last couple yeah, of years. And, and really, I guess the other thing is that people are going to balk at 15,000 square feet, right? So we need to make the case that 15,000 feet is needed. You know, I think people just, if they haven't been involved with it, or don't have any understanding of what it takes to run a current senior center or one for the future, they're going to say, "Playing room. Look what they've done. They've used this. They used that. They've been yeah. in a church. They, man, yeah. you know, they only need six thousand square feet. They don't really have a concept of why. So we really need to make a, a large push. Yeah, why right. fifteen is 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 necessary and and doesn't quite get us everything. Well, that's that may be sort of like the next yeah but step. The other thing I think you know um, that we're not really you know that we touched upon that haven't really shared with the community is the age of our three towns mm -hmm. and how that number is only going to increase. Mm -hmm. yep. the, the other piece is to, um, you know, to change the perception that we're just activities. You know, we are really good resources for a lot of different programs, for essential things, for food insecurity, for helping with fuel assistance and other programs that we partner with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, safety. Yep. And but just not just that, but I mean, you know, from um from the the folks that are here today sharing about you know the needs for you know the fitness. Um, even when I I toured you know the Hadley Senior Center with Chris Monty, and I would actually like to invite the three of you um, at at a conducive time to go on a tour of different I centers because then you can see what you know what they're currently doing. And even the Hadley Center, uh, their new director is changing some things up with, you know, some of those rooms were uh, pur purposed for like one activity where, you know, she's in there now uh, changing things up to be like, hey, no, this room can be served for this, this, and this, and changing it up. And, you know, yeah. the thing for us is, and, and this would also go back to, to Ms. Mazanka's point, you know, we had to close down for some things, you know, because like the town of Waitley, which we're grateful that we can use the space, but, you know, if, if they're closed for something or if the staff, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, one of our one of our members of uh, parents passed away. So, you know, he was out for the week and we, um, you know, had to just take two staff to Biggie and, and not have the program in the morning. But, mm -hmm. So it's it's hard for us to yeah, it's, be it's in all the places, yeah. um, you know, for, for everything that's needed. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the staff and I have been chatting some of it we want to scale back on because 
we are tired. We are, you know, it is a lot of different yeah. stuff. But, so yeah, I mean, we knew it was going to be pressure on the staff. So mm -hmm. getting those extra, the bringing mm -hmm. all the staff to full time, I essentially, see, yeah. was, I think, really critical. Yes. Or else we would just be completely. Um, yeah. yeah, things would be much, much worse. I think when we settle on something and we get further down the line with Doug, uh, I really would love to see a meeting for the three towns at Frontier in the auditorium, because that's our shared yep. three town building, to really present why 15,000 square feet, why we've come up with this plan, why the design works, what the needs are in the future. I think when we had a senior center person comment of this was probably three or four years ago we had an event it was before you had an event at Deerfield elementary school where we had a an architect who does these uh come in and do a presentation that I, was 2015 because well, they, i have the report and my desk it was really nice they did a nice job and, and like everybody was nodding their heads and they came across and so i think doug kind of lends himself to having that expertise of doing much of these yeah. all over communities and, and really kind of get the buy-in of all three towns to go this is a priority for us you know we put it on the back burner for as long as i've been on and before that so at least 10 years and longer, I'm sure, for everyone who's been here. But really, it has been a focus, and we keep like renting space here and moving here. Like, we really need to get this done for our community. And uh, when we all show all three towns are for this, the square footage comment will go away. Maybe it's just a little less, maybe whatever. But then maybe we can get some some grants from our you know from our legislatures to say hey look we're, we're regionalizing yeah, we can, we're, we can and we can blue be, be. yeah like when we've got a good solid plan with documents behind it that's what they that's, want to get by. that's what these and your data yeah yes. and we'll, and your data. we'll support all yes that. exactly also with joe and natalie everybody's behind it you get jim McGovern on it and then you know we can get some senators to send some federal money or we make something like this happen it, That's you know, the and, the, and the grants, you know, I mean, there is the, there is the regional grant that we comply for, uh, that's 1.375 million, but mm -hmm. looking at the big picture, that's like a little drop in the bucket, yeah, but it, every, every bit does help. Yeah. So it's, it's just, you know, trying to figure out where we are, but yeah. with, with everything that we've been adding though, I mean, the amount of, oh, hold on, I actually have, um, all the numbers how many people we've even added since we left the church um <laughs> just needed a new one yesterday yeah i made sure i couldn't be here with jennifer if you really? thought if i left her you know yeah. she would just go home and go out through with it oh yeah so the first year i was here we brought in 120 new members in 2023, we brought in 151. For 2024, um, which isn't over yet. No, uh, we brought in um, 77 from January 1st through May 6th, and then from uh, May 7th through 9/11, 37 new months. But over a hundred. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't have my numbers. Yeah. I just grabbed the first. So, but you know, so we're if we keep adding at least. 100 to 150 new members annually with the aging population where we yeah. need that space and it, that'll be well, just, especially when you're having space in the and, and if people uh, like the programming you draw more people you know um, especially in a nice new place yep and and that's what you know some of the other centers have done i know um camden i've met with um you know i've spoken with their director a few different times at some of the MCOA meetings, and uh, she has shared, you know, they have a smaller place, and now they have to build on to it a second mm -hmm. edition. And I think their first one was either yeah, seven yeah, or eight thousand right. square feet. The EDM did yeah, yeah, they did yeah. one, and then they outgrew it immediately. Now they're building another one, yeah. and then um, you and know, that's but, not a huge town. Hampton's small, no, very small. But like, uh, when your population, but, but they have like some. They have some uh, Wilbraham nearby yeah. and stuff like that, some Springfield, but but when your population, you know, continues to to age, and and also one other thing is we have a lot of solo agers, mm -hmm. um, you know, who either you know never married, sure. uh, widowed, widower, sure. divorced, whatnot. Kids are away. Uh, yeah, they don't have you know a huge support system. They create a new support system between meeting new, new friend making new friends at the center yeah. or you know looking at staff or other you know other people they've met. 
Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's really important to keep that community connection mm -hmm. because isolation, um, you know, is the number one issue that most older adults face in the community. Yeah. And, you know, it can lead to depression. Um, and suicide is really high amongst mm -hmm. older adults. Yeah. So, you know, our goal is then to reduce the isolation to hopefully reduce the depression, yeah. um, you know, to bring folks in for various programs. Even if, um, I, while we're talking on this, I just want to share, I got an email yesterday um, from one of our members. Jennifer, thanks for providing all the variety of activities for the seniors of Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley. It's greatly appreciated. While some of us pick and choose, which offering we participate in. We are glad we have the program for the SCSP. Have a nice day, Tim Moynihan. Yes. You know, and yeah. Tim um, comes for different activities. He's not here all the time, but since we started offering fine arts, he's been here twice a week, um, you know, for the classes. So yeah. I think- and, you're, Yeah, we're talking about all the reasons yeah. why we're here. Yep. And so, uh, so uh, me, I'm not as worried about the 15, thousand square foot number i think that's a real number i think that's a number we should aspire for and yeah. if we end up compromising at four thousand that's one thing yeah. but that's the number we should aspire for is it really going to cost 15 million i don't know about that depends on when we do how, how long we wait yeah <laughs> yeah there's a lot there's a lot of questions well here there so yeah i that's um uh, so to, to me that it's like other issues are going to weigh in mm -hmm. like will it ever be able to, to carry down that trip? right um the question of would we ever really be able to purchase so our second agenda item on the consortium i think we should move on that mm -hmm. so that we are in a position that if there's a something, something to buy that we can actually buy it mm -hmm. right. we can move chats on that so if that's what we get done this year, either in series or in parallel with these other things, I think those are uh, those are two important things. Um, I think um, one thing that was said at the last meeting that we have to take seriously, and you weren't at the the, the last meeting, and it's from somebody who's sort of new to the three towns, um, but a lot of experience in municipal government in Massachusetts in other states as well. And they made this point. They said that Montreal property is really awesome. And if it was anywhere else in, fact, in the right. three towns, yes. it would be the obvious. I'll make, I'll make the point. I mean, the yeah. thing is, let's want to draw like that. So, just so I'm clear, Bulky's good, it's got 12,000. Yeah. So, it's good. So, we can use rental, we can run that out of there. That comes to 7.8 million. But well, it's, it's four miles, two miles, whatever that was. Yeah. Yeah. And when you look at the group, it's just it's yeah. not it's just geographically it's not it's not going yeah. on the bottom. So what you want the most wonderful yeah. yeah. And he put it he put it really strongly. He said there is nothing about that location that is gonna make it worth the reduced cost. Well, well if everybody's riding the bus, those great buses one every ten minutes, so I'd be like, well, okay. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Sure. <laughs> it. yeah. Like, there's no other municipal buildings around it there's no other there's not a library next door there's not yeah a, you know, there's not if, there, there, was, if there was a good bus to get into sunderland center that'd be different if yeah, we had good buses yeah, if we lived in stockholm and uh and i think um the 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 Waitley and Deerfield sites are more centrally located. They are. Yes. Um, and now Waitley's is not in the, like, the center of town. Yeah, but it's close. Um, but it's close. And we ha and we ha yeah, and we have to talk the buses and to go in there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't always worry that much about um, like PBTA and mm -hmm. uh, FRTA transit because honestly, it's a good way to get people from Amherst stuff here. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to get people from Red Camp right. because of the way they run the routes. But it's not necessarily addressing the transportation needs we have and getting somebody from Weber Road right in. And that's the transportation that you've been addressing. Yes. And so we, we, we've sort of taken that transportation part on ourselves right. uh, to what, you know, mm -hmm. to whatever's within our power. Yeah. We've got like a van now. We're getting a new one and, and maybe another one. Yep. So we may well have 
Well, I think that that first one might it's not gonna be, be traded in. So it's it's gonna say the trend, that one probably is worth trading in. Okay, it's a plan because it's uh, if, if, if not, it's, it's gonna fall apart, right? Well, the so, motor, the motor yeah. on the lift is uh, giving us a little bit of an issue, so we've got to have that with that, yeah, um, within the next week, yeah. and then um, the I think, yeah, what I think we're getting a New van in June of next year, not 2026. Mm. They they put conflicting information on their website. So and right yeah. now, yeah, um, we'll get to this when we talk about the unanticipated. But um, yeah, we're okay. looking at another. We're looking at another grant for a second van, but partnering with TVTA. So there would be no capital money needed from any of the three towns for a match. I'll so. say one, I'll just say one more thing. If you look at just the square price, square unit price to give you the fifteen thousand, I mean, so you can give you the give you the sum of much lower cost. There, I think square with the unit price, right? And so that, yeah, that's, and that's we'll a spend bad. a little bit on what you what you have to buy it for. They put in uh, one point five million five. for the uh, for the cut of the cost. I think it's the inspectors say it's probably one point eight million for the cost, but sure. that that's like the third yeah, digit. Sure. Right, <laughs> right. It's just it's really so and. So I, I think for all of these things, to get a better idea of what potential costs are, the consultants will have to actually go look at, okay, how do we fit, here's the high priority needs, and we imagine here this room that's gonna be shared for arts and music, and this room that's gonna be shared for, for exercise classes of all companies and so on. Uh, when they actually sit down with the layout of those buildings and they've got all that information, we've gotta give them two buildings to say, how would you like this out? Mm -hmm. And that's when we start seeing, well, if it were in on Tree Road, we could probably fit um, all of, maybe you could everything to 12,000 square feet, probably not. Um, right. How much could you fit into that 12,000 square feet? Then what would you build new? And uh, that's where it might break down something off. The new thing you have to build isn't going to be $500 a square feet, 550 or whatever the budget would be. Um, in Waitley, the cost for renovation is higher because it's a shell, right? Um, but there's other, there's different possibilities there because both of the interior spaces are really high ceilings. Mm -hmm. So big open spaces, um, you could do something with that. And if you're building new for at least half of the new space, um, right. so it, I think if we were, you know, just thinking of those two spaces, they're both new, but they're both very different in yeah. how. You would find you, we need more detail. Um, in, in Deerfield, I mean, that spot has different good things about it. It's like walkable to a lot of other things. Um, lots of shared parking with other entities. Yeah. So it's hard for me to eliminate mm -hmm. one of those. And um, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah. And I, I think uh, probably the bad the bad side of Waitley's is that it is in an industrial park, mm -hmm. and uh, right now there's not a, the, the trees are small because mm -hmm. they've only put in the last a little while. <laughs> yeah. years. There, there will be nice big trees there, um, and uh, it's but it's got lots of parking, so mm -hmm. you know, people can get there and have a place to park. Um, mm -hmm. There's yeah, so, so it seems like like we've got. Uh, it's not like the building cost at this point. That's not different enough no, for us to scratch anybody off. Right. The availability of parking and green space. I mean, while it's less green space in Deerfield, we've got a parking maybe. Yeah. And, right. So that's not something that we decided. So um, it seems like the things going forward is can for Sunderland, back. can we overcome the location? And then in Maryland, it's, you know, it's not, oh, it's yeah, not 12,000 square feet, but, but they're, they're, like, it's in, not even as wide as this building here, so. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, but those truss walls. No, I, I, no, I get that, but they even, do a even with the truss walls gone, like, the, the structure of the building is super yeah. wide. Right, and, right. Uh, and Deerfield has that, are we ever going to tear down that building? Right. Because that's going to lay us a lot. Yeah, yeah. I actually think, they, yeah. you know, when, we, when they presented about, I think lately is the better one. And, and for me, I've been gung ho, but know. I've been really, really excited about the Plum Tree Road space. But I think yeah. the location is definitely going to be a deterrent mm -hmm. because, um, you know, especially getting the buy in from the three communities, um, 
you know, and Waitley is not too far from the South Jericho location. And regardless of whether or not it's close by, when people are going to a place, they're going to a destination. When people come here, they're not going to the, typically, they're not going to the bank. You know, they may be going down to wild roots for, you know, for something, but we would have a full kitchen. We'd be serving lunch. There'd be no need to leave for that. There, you know, when folks go to the enhanced fitness class, you know, some people would stay after at the church, not everyone, because some people, you know, just plan their day. They're going for a particular event and then they're leaving. Yeah. So I, I think with the green space there, you can expand the green space. Mm -hmm. I know that their yeah, plan showed the, the, yeah. the way that the parking would be expanded in the front and potentially some square footage up in the top left corner when you're looking yeah. aerial at the yeah. plot. Can I share? Yeah, I'd like to set that up. Uh, okay, uh, you should get, yeah, let me be a presenter. I will pull up the that Make document. Up. Is that good? There we go. Um, back to Zoom. Nope, do you have yours? And I'm going to share. Okay, yeah, no, I'm going to share. Oh, that's you. Yeah, I did. Um, here we go. Okay. So, sorry. Um, I didn't realize, is that me or you? Um, is it me or you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, there. So, it's not, uh, oh, it's, 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 let me do a different job. No, I, I think I did. Oh, I think I'm up there. Mm -hmm. I'm Jennifer Remillard. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm here. I'm going to stop sharing. It's dog. Does mine look like I was sharing? It's your dog, Dylan. That's right. We're going to sit no more. I didn't want to follow the presentation side. We did the during the school year, we were ready to watch something out. Yeah. Some of them were something. Yeah. But they don't want to them. But, I mean, just on the presentation yeah. issue, we could, we could see if we could get. That bus to go through a meeting or how to wait, but like more frequently, just like the college buses. And even think about that. Yeah, no, yeah, we're, yeah, we're working really well with Paul and all of the, those folks with everything. Yeah. I don't know how to get this to do this. Just a thought. Yeah, we yeah. can yeah. push them on to see you, Master. You want to Right. Then, you know, you have the bus with a Oh, that's my screen. Yeah. I'm sorry, Joyce. I don't know what happened. Stop sharing for a minute. There we go. Let me do this. Okay, now it seems now, to be letting me. Can you now, share now? Now, Joyce was up there. There, okay. there we go. Oh, all right. There it is. Sorry. Um, so, um, I'll try and make that a little bit bigger. I'm going um, That. So that's the Deerfield site. They're saying if you paved over. That yellow portion, the yeah. blue portion is an 8,000 square foot footprint that's on top of the church and then yeah. 2,500 square feet of green space in front of this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Sandy Lane, they proposed a couple different things. There's one layout that they proposed was expanding the parking lot here, uh, adding on 10,000 square feet here, having a big green space, uh, 15,000 square feet. Um, and making a smaller, like, staff parking lot over here. Um, and uh, it, they don't show a driveway. People will just have to jump their cars. So you get into that, apparently. Um, well, that's why you've got the 42,000 square feet of parking there, and you can drive to the front. <laughs> that's right. The thing I like about this is, is you can drive right to the front. They had another similar layout. The cost estimate isn't any different, where if you can cut another driveway there, uh, then you could expand it this way instead of the vertical kind of drop yeah. off area. And then yeah. they didn't uh, they didn't hash out the green space, but that would be all of this area here. Mm -hmm. um, but they're saying either even so, you'd have to probably expand that. Even though that big parking lot is there, you'd still have to expand it if you yeah. put the senior center in there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's not unreasonable. Um, but it, there's. There's, there's some flexibility, I guess. Is so I'm how saying. many how many parking spaces is that? Nine, uh, okay. uh, 92? Yeah, 92 spaces there. Okay, and the other one's 93. Um, and uh, so to me, those are both close enough to 100. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And but you are sharing it with the town offices. Yeah, and some people carpool too. So. And some people yeah. carpool, and some people are getting transported by van. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we can somehow manage that if we do. And they put Sandy Language in South Korea. So they apologize profusely for that. It's not mailing address yeah. that way. So right. Um you gonna scroll yeah. down the pump tree? The, uh, yeah, I can say on, on this one the parking was it's really 50 spaces and the rest are shared mm -hmm. and they don't like shared but we share we're like we like share okay so let me get on to fun tree road um they are recommending if we expand that existing parking lot um it looks like it to take down a bunch of trees which i would feel bad about oh, yeah. uh, there's only 40 there now there's only 100 is what you're talking that's so, what the goal would be, so the big thing is, is that we're planning for now, but we're also planning for the future. Sure. Because once we do this, we know in 25 years, we're not going to get another senior center or any other buildings yeah. going like that. Um, mm -hmm. So you want to project. I mean, just talking about the new members, we've increased one, two, three, uh, you know, 300 and... 71 new members yeah. since... Uh, uh, what's the matching of in this case? Here, oh my god, we <laughs> no, we've had this whole entire parking lot filled. We park over at the bank, yeah. and then we've also had to shuttle from town yeah. hall. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. this this yeah. place is not not, not, not adequate for parking. Yeah. We need, yeah. Brian, do you know how many parking yeah. spaces are at the park church? Store. Uh, uh, at, the, at the Holy Family, I don't know well, because the Holy Family parking lot sometimes wasn't even enough, and the congregational church over here. Is not enough, and that we, we can fit like maybe 35 40 people there parking, um, or cars, and then staff will always park here, and then we have volunteers park across other places around here. So, we definitely need 100 parking spaces. Yeah, you could be, I mean, on, the, on this one, can yeah. you share it? Kind of, kind of I don't know. Um, you know, and that would be something to look that would be a more of a detail. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Take no and, and, and uh, honestly, one of the things that makes me think this price is ridiculous is that they say it's going to cost a hundred thousand dollars for this parking lot, right? Yeah, and I'm like, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to cost, and because we have highway departments, because we have the skills within our community, but you still have to pay for yeah. their hours and, and products. Right. So oh, products I, I the agree. product, I think, is what the the thing is. The cost is right. going up on everything. I'm well, just in the True. Yeah. True. Um, but really, the new parking, half a million dollars? Five hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, I think that's what we're looking at for the jury lot. For oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it does, <laughs> right. Okay. Anyhow, uh, it, it does seem like our towns are actually pretty good at utilizing our local resources sure. Sure. Um, to if uh, you know for like a, a town's in kind match could be the word of their mm -hmm. I mean for running yeah. running project that's and in kind matches are are good on yeah. um, grants so I, so I, I I'm not worried about the numbers um, but this is what they had imagined for uh, for that site um, a then, little tiny little blue add on here um, take the parking lot that's on the side and make it much bigger. Uh, and work something so that you have kind of a turnaround mm -hmm. here. And you keep the green spaces out front, and you keep some of this green space that's out back. Um, and uh, right now, this picture was taken when there are no leaves on the trees, which yeah. I guess is good, but presumably mm -hmm. you, you do as much as you can to keep as many of those trees mm -hmm. as you can. Um, so that's... Yeah, the only plus I'd say on this one is you get, you get you have a and the PVTA, okay. uh, we've already spoken with the PVTA, if we yeah. were to be here, they would make a, a loop at the back entrance. Yeah, they, oh, they looked at it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so, so they would make it accessible for their fixed rounds yeah. stuff there. Yeah. So at this point, maybe we should focus in on which two sites should we recommend they go forward with. And here I have to admit, I don't know the like exact procedure. Yeah. My guess is because the grant is administered by the town of Deerfield, it will ultimately be the Deerfield selection who make the sure. decision. But our 
job is to advise. Right. Oh, so okay. what advice would we have as far as the three locations? Let's see, the time between the summer is always important. Time between the summer is you want to see this one. Yeah, made it work. The, well, the barrier to, is purchasing the building, yeah, right. and then the location is the other. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I can totally agree with those. Yeah. Ah. The one one point I just want to share. So if we did go to Sunderland. We would be able to leave this space because we would be able to be as. Yes. We in could. the front half of that space, while the back half is being renovated, we could be in the front half. At least the staff could be, mm -hmm. and um, you and know, you can use can one or gradually grow rooms. yourself in. Yes. Yeah. So we would reduce the cost of the of renting this space, which is uh, right now eighteen hundred and ninety dollars a month. Um, we're not paying for a second space except when we go to the Sunderland Congregational Church. We pay seventy five dollars if we're not using the kitchen, um, you know, for for like our food pantry and other events that we have there. So that's very low cost. Very low cost. Um, so you know, we can we could look at that as as a cost saving for the. Uh, I don't. I'm not mapping right now. Yeah, so whatever okay. eighteen ninety times twelve is. Well, that yeah, and but that's all very that's. That's small change yep. compared to the millions. The, yep. the millions. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so like, I I don't know which site to volunteer to not. Yeah. That's and it, it that's I think the hardest thing. Do, so let me ask you this question. So um, we're doing the open house on October second, which is um, you know week so. from Wednesday. Um, we're, you know, I've been advertising it everywhere. Chris Larrabee is going to be doing an article on it. We yeah. get leading up. Um, so I'm wondering, do we want when people come in, um, you know, if they pick the locations, you know, we can have the three options and have, you know, those who attend we'll just get kind of decide and get, or, or at we'll least get, get the input get from them yeah. before you make the decision. I mean, I know their deadline is December, but we could always have a, a, a brief meeting to just get the information and meet for a half hour on Zoom or, or in person or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, we can that. schedule our next meeting to be after that. Yeah, not necessarily a long time after that, but right, right, to yeah. be after that and get that. I think that was an excellent idea. We don't have to decide everything today. Did they do timelines for each of the three options? Well, um, no, I think that would be in the next. Um, in the next, they actually yeah. put on here. So some of the stuff that they put on here was escalation to start with summer of twenty twenty six was just the time frame I think to start. Right, um, I think that's the same for all. Three. Yeah, that that's it there. So that was the only date I had seen on the other on any of that. Other than that, they didn't put a timeline. Um, so. No, okay. Yeah. So I guess so we don't have to decide. I feel like we've we've kind of looked at this from kind of all kinds of angles. We know none of our sites are perfect. They're all going to be constantly to get what we want. Yeah. Um and, and they in, in some cases we have some challenges of ownership challenges is up. Will the will the town yeah, we'll build the town demolish the existing building mm -hmm. um and things like that. So yeah. uh I the I again I, I wish we could just say, oh, could you just do all three? Just no. Um but uh, we'd have to come up with money. Yeah. Right. We'd have to come up with money to do that. Yeah. And I don't think we've got a right. uh, not on that really kind of time scale. No. So um among us, we, we have to probably think on this, uh, talk to people, talk to people that you, yeah. um, I, I, I want to say trust, that's not quite the right word, no. but people who have a, a good sense of what can be done. Like I've got a, a mental list of three people I want to talk to them lately yeah. uh, about this and say, you know, what is your gut type? Right, exactly. And, um, yeah. and so do you want to meet sometime after yeah. the yeah. So, so yeah, let's, when we get to the point of setting our next meeting date, let's set one for early, mid October. Special town meeting on the 7th. Uh, yeah, the, the, the meeting that we're doing is October 2nd. So, yeah. um, I, you know, that coming weekend is like the 6th, the 7th. 5th and 6th. The 5th. And then the 7th is the special town meeting. Yeah. And there's no vote related to this. No. 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 That's a vote for what? Yeah. The funding for the 1888 building? Yeah, I'm on a bunch of. 
Yeah. I haven't paid attention to that. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure what. Okay. Yeah. I will know I show up. I read it when I get there. So that's right. Okay. So is there? Let's let's put the meeting date to the to end. To yeah. the end. Um, so I feel like we we kind of finished this topic unless mm -hmm. somebody has something. Nope. Yeah. Good. So we'll take the feedback. Then we'll then you'll we'll make a decision on what the best. Yeah. And I'll also send an email out to folks, you know, um, if they can't make it, um, is it, I would like to share that these are the three sites that we're yeah. looking at and, you know, what's, yeah. they have no, yeah. their feedback. It's been in public person. meetings already, sure. so it's public. Yeah, no, 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 I know that. Yeah. I'm saying, like, I want to make sure that we include the three. Um, should I include any of the drawings? Uh, your her spreadsheet was pretty good. It had everything done. Well, yeah, I, don't, I, I mean, do you want the cost analysis to go to yeah, go out I'm with sure. that as well in the spreadsheet, or do you want um, to just be well? Out? I, I don't want to give anybody a heart attack. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think I think um, the fact that we're being transparent and honest, yeah. you know, and letting them know what the goal is with everything is really important. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, then, yeah, and people, yeah. yeah, and it is an Excel file, so you can actually go in there and do things like you could say, Well, if people really like the, the 12,000 square feet at Plum Tree Road, you can go in and change the Waitley site to 12,000 square feet, right? And get a, a closer to so yeah. realistic comparison. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although, if you're going to build something new, it's just the yes. need, yeah, so, yeah. I think so, we need to build what we need because, yeah, we, I think we we're going to continue to increase membership because. If people, you know, if you get a brand new building, that's going to bring in a, a whole another uh, section of folks who may not have come because they didn't like location or, you know, maybe they didn't like Holy Family because it was a religious site or they didn't like here because we have no parking or they didn't want to come across the bridge. I mean, you may get people who, hey, Senior Center is now offering bocce ball or whatever the activity is. I don't know, but... You know, yeah. people come yeah. very yeah. Well, classes on how to close out your annuity to pay for the building. All <laughs> <laughs> right, there we go. All right, okay, all right. Great. Let's move on to the next item. Well, hopeful that we might see it in our lifetime. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, these are so we can put a little information. Yeah, help in crystallizing, clarifying things, and working with people who have done this before. Yeah, uh, really, and the, the idea that I mean, it seems obvious now. You should focus on what you're trying to do. That should determine what building you need, not the building you have. See if you can shoehorn something in right. the right yeah. She has done so much in the short time that she's been here, mm -hmm. and and because of that. There has been an increase of membership because yeah. of the programming yeah. and events that she yeah. can now offer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, and that yeah. and that insight is as reinforced when a professional art says yeah. this and the professional plan says it. it. It really makes a difference. Now, professionals put, uh, you know, just put the real reasons yeah. and, and have data to back it up. Mm -hmm. That's what's called that frontier meeting. But no, everybody. we can definitely uh, do that. I think I would um, talk to everybody, just a professional here. So, finance committee is all there, too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. I think the big piece, too, right now is once, you know, once we get um, the data from the open house, the yeah. feedback, then we have the meeting, yeah. and then you suggest to your field, and they decide, or, mm -hmm. well, they're, they're working directly with us for that information. So, if we tell them the two sites, yeah, like we tell them the two sites. We don't have the yeah. power to tell consultants these are the two sites, do these, because we are not their boss. Yes. You guys Trevor, are Trevor's the Trevor's so, the yeah. 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 So we're gonna go along with whatever this is. Okay. There's not gonna be like, oh they're getting excited, but it's not okay. good. It's, it's whatever. I don't want to interrupt you. Okay, you can join us. I think what you said was really interesting. Oh, good. And I liked the idea of having everybody meet. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for coming. Bye, guys. Well, you can have in the waiting. I mean, sadly, but he was one off the other. So, happy. Happy's only 10 because originally it was 12,000, and then 
Um, they knocked 2,000 square feet off, I believe, due to cost. But then after the fact of, you know, being in there, they realized they really needed that additional 2,000 square foot. Like they have a problem like with parking and with... Yeah, it was a delay yeah. because there was shared parking, not just with the library, but the American Legion or VFW. Right, right, yeah. I think it's the Legion. It's yeah. right there. Yeah. So there was uh, a delay with, yeah. with those sides. And, and being there for their parking... Even just having people in an exercise class and some other things, there is very tight. So the fact mm -hmm. of you know that we're looking at the parking, it really can be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but you know because with the new library, I'm sure they're also looking at bringing in you know new people mm -hmm. to the library and, and things. So um, yes. it's just going to be finagling and making sure that things are you know. You know we got to make sure we have good things going so seniors can Irving, you know what? I have not been up to it uh, to check out everything. I've driven past it. Yeah. 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 Irving is very lucky. They have the paper, uh, they have the milled endowment that can help us. But I haven't seen uh, that one. That I don't know off the top of my head. You know, and, and the other thing to remember is when you see one senior center, you see one senior center yeah. because so many, you know, places are different. They have different needs in each community. Um, so, yeah. So I think the next item on the agenda is uh, the INA. I know uh, we got a response from Pete Kane, um, but we didn't get a response from anyone else. Yeah. So uh, um, just looking through, I looked through Pete's sort of comments. Mostly he was. He was doing kind of grammar things, yeah, <laughs> uh, making it like more of a proper legal document. Um, he answered some of my questions about, yeah, you need a treasurer, even if they, I mean, and technically they're in charge of the South Wing Senior Center budget, um, but the the treasurer gives day to day handling of the budget to the director. Um, but in essence, the board of directors would need a treasurer who would ultimately provide fiscal reports I'll via say the director. One of the other things too is share um Julie Moreno, who's the director of at the Shelburne um, Consortium. They're going to a district. Oh, going to the district. So which is, uh, how is that different from Consortium? Uh, I don't know, yeah. but she yeah. she's uh gonna be sharing information what to, to me um with that. So um I don't know all the details. She she was out I think this is her second or third time she got COVID, so she did have a chance to talk about all of that. Uh, but you know, she did share that they were going to the district. Um so what could you just share fire district? What what makes the district different than a consortium? Well they have the ability to raise taxes. How yeah, yeah. well it's one day problem. It's a levy on your property. Yeah. property tax. Oh so you your children tax. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, but you well, can't you can't use that argument because you know everybody needs for education. No, I still but, I agree. I agree. So yeah. but but the problem is is that you know one of the goals that we're trying to do, and, and I know there's gonna be some tax increase, but most of our older adults and all the communities because we don't have a huge business tax base is you know it's going to fall on households so trying to keep that within the thought process of where we're mm -hmm. at um you know and, and knowing even if we take um with all your math and all that experience <laughs> if you take the 15 million and you look at the existing property ownership within the towns based on real estate taxes mm -hmm. paid by businesses versus individuals or whatever is there a way to uh, Figure out what it would be for a cost in, for an increase per household. That depends a lot on how you finance it, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, like over time, like because mostly you um, you have to figure out how much are you ultimately going to have to buy. Right. And it usually it's the borrowing costs yeah. the main increase in your right. taxes. Well, because I know for, I know when uh, Jeff Kravitz was here, he based it on a fifteen year note versus a thirty note, which you could you know right. Yeah, it has a lower cost, but I, I know in the That's long run you're saving less, saving less. Um, you know, by doing a fifteen year note versus doing a thirty year. Right. In the long run, you're paying more in interest and whatnot. Right. But what is the tax burden on the communities? with those. And I know that's going to be a big pushback question that we're going to get because especially in Deerfield with the 
with the library project um, that was just in. And then, you know, the 1888 building, I hear CPA funds, et cetera. And I know for the senior housing project, money's been put into the CPA fund for that, so there won't be an additional tax, a new tax burden. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think there would be a new tax burden for this project in addition to the library. And then lately, do you have any other major projects still in your community? Um, the town hall loans, I think, are coming in pretty soon. We'll get it. Uh, uh, that one because we ended up doing that whole thing for four million dollars. Great right deal. We got mm -hmm. um yeah, so but uh the what they did some I want to say tricky financing, that's not yeah. really correct, but like every year when the note came up, they pay it, pay it off yeah. as much as they can and then refinance it at the lower rate. Yeah. So that so they it yeah. kept getting yeah. Yeah. right. So yeah, that yeah. may we're not necessarily in the same Kind of situation, right? Yeah. But, but no, it's, it's good but, to know how everything, how you know, the yeah. community. And to my understanding, Sunderland doesn't have any big projects coming up right now. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just looking at the overarching effect. Um, you know, because we do have people who lived on a fixed budget. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're trying to just look right. at that. I mean, well, the question really is: is who should do the borrowing? Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. And then, does that entity yeah. have a bond rating? You know what I mean? So, you know, like if we were an entity that went out and borrowed, it's a brand new. Yeah, brand new. Right. So, we both need to leverage the title. I don't know. Right. But the thing, here's, here's a suggestion that I have regarding that because the feedback I get from the individuals, not from town officials, individuals who have spoken to me about different things. The biggest issue that is in there is if one community votes to purchase it, like some taxpayers in Sunderland, you know, for, for purchase, I'm just throwing that out there for sure. sale yeah. for uh for yeah. a bunch That's of right. considering it works better. Right. Yeah. So that people are saying, well, what's to say Deerfield's not gonna back out? What's to say Wheaton's not gonna back out? You know, uh, you know so yeah. 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 so I, I would you know, suggest that you know we we have a predetermined agreement if there's purchase, or if we're going into this renovation at the other two sites, that we you know that we have some formal agreement so that way when you go in front of the taxpayer or through the annual town mm -hmm. meetings, you have we have this agreement. We're moving forward now. We need to come to you for the financing and. I know in the past it's uh, you know right now Deerfield pays the majority and each of you know fifty percent and then twenty five mm -hmm. to twenty five. So be, um, you know looking at usage and stuff, Deerfield still has double the numbers of the other towns. Mm -hmm. So you know, and if you're looking at a frontier piece, you know how you went forward purchasing that. Um, I know you also have Conway in the mix there, mm -hmm. but um, I think just having a predetermined plan or to you know amongst all the, you know, through you and the Board of Oversight and then the select boards are on board to bring it to the town meetings because then if we're at this point now and we have this, we could start moving forward in April, June, whatever your ATMs are. Yeah. Um, because it, it is a big project, but it is also sharing that information and educating people, having those big things and having more than one. And because I think, you know, we have to do one during the day for, you know, our main um, participants who go to the centers and then, you know, in the evening or, or even a weekend, just so everybody feels included in the discussion. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm going to focus us back on the Lord. Sorry. Let's get <laughs> um, uh, so we're thinking about this consortium agreement and to me, one of the main advantages of it is it could help us at least with the flexibility that we wouldn't have to have a town purchase the building uh, if we were a building we could purchase and uh i don't know that the minute we become a consortium if that's what happens i don't know if that very minute we go out and make an offer <laughs> probably not yeah. um but at least that is one avenue that we can pursue and uh, what if a building never comes out for us to buy? Well, then we never buy a building. Well, but it's so there's no <laughs> way to buy. Okay, yeah. And the other things um, that uh, I think Pete actually commented on as well, uh, he liked the kind of expanding 
uh, the uh, composition of the board. Could the consortium buy one of the public buildings? Um, Just they are. Presumably. Why not? The consortium would be the three towns. Yeah, why, why couldn't that happen? The, uh, the court solution would be the South County Senior Center Consortium. Um, and it's uh, the mm -hmm. same, it's the structure that they have in uh, Asheville, Buckman, and Shelby oh. Falls. Mm -hmm. Their senior center is run by this consortium, uh, which has a host town, much the way Deerfield is our uh, host fiduciary. fiduciary. Mm -hmm. um, so it's such that when you, when you employ people there, employ, employ the town of Deerfield here. So they, it has some very similar structures to what we're doing now. But it does allow for the purchase, and it's it's uh, I was going to say it's rather vaguely written. Yeah. It really only requires that at the time you purchase it, you have agreements in place with all three towns, and that all three towns have to be on board and make the commitment uh, to support that purchase. Yeah. And I, so it, it doesn't do a lot of other things. Like it doesn't specify like what kind of land you. It, it's it's very open because no. Who the heck knows? Who owns the senior center for that construction? Who owns it? Oh, it's actually housed in a municipal building. So it's in a municipal building. Yeah, but they don't. Have... But they don't, and they don't own it, as far as I know. But, but they the control the space. Well, the but the agreement would allow for yeah. if a building came open, yeah. the shelter folks that was appropriate. This consortium could be the owner of that. Building. So one of the, the top. As far as I know, they've not. They've never exercised that particular. So the town up there takes care of the building, does all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It does. Yeah. Um, I think one of Pete's comments on this was that um, there's, uh, let's see. Do you want to share it on screen? Or no? Yeah, I'll try to. Um, yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to read it, but I think we can share it on the screen. Uh, no, Pete's the uh, town administrator. Pete's our new town administrator. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, 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 um, yeah. Okay. So we're at 11:30. Is our stop time? Okay. Uh, right. So a very like one place where Pete made a substantive thing that was not just a uh, uh, a grammar thing. Uh, he says, "I'm also thinking this should be a new host town." Uh, portion here that outlines the responsibilities of the host community. Right now, the agreement references those responsibilities throughout, but it would be helpful to have them established in the forefront so it's clear. I'll, it'll also help clarify, uh, clearly define the role difference between the host town and the board of directors. Mm -hmm. So he, he was saying maybe, maybe that would be a helpful section to add uh, um, later. Uh, so uh, that was something we were, were saying. Um, uh, he clarified about, yeah, you need a treasurer, and technically the treasurer of the board of directors is in charge of the money for the senior center. But when you have a director, normally the treasurer gives that day-to-day -day operating mm -hmm. to the director, and maybe the director helps the treasurer come up with uh, reports out of QuickBooks or whatever you're using to, so they can report to the board. That that's definitely that we have with town council. So it's really the town accountant in Deerfield who's preparing the reports. Yeah. So the treasurer would not be someone who's necessarily um, committing themselves to hours and hours of work doing mm -hmm. actual accounting. There's actually someone doing the accounting. Um, so they don't have a treasurer on the list in this one. I think we do. We do not now, but it, they do in here. That's oh, okay. What, I that's what I'm asking. Yeah. If there's one um, sort of shared agreement. So just one way to okay. Time. So he, he, yeah, so I'm looking for things that were not grammatical uh, that Pete put in there. Um, he asked about um, should this be further? Okay, so um, the director shall recommend it, uh, the most towns. So this is about um, senior center employees. It says the director shall recommend candidates for hire. The host town select board shall have all final hiring discipline determination of um, So Pete's comment on this is, should this be further defined, such as setting an expectation for public job posting, interviewing, uh, and minimum candidates? I'm not sure if minimum candidates, but minimum qualifications. Mm -hmm. uh, the hiring policies for the select boards 
are defined in the personnel policies of the communities. But I'm not sure if we're saying that the policy looks true the process of the director in their search for other set, senior center staff. Maybe you could just reference through the hiring process as defined by those 10 personnel policies. So that seems like something that probably that would be clarified, could probably be clarified and would be neat. Yeah. Says that. I think that's actually what our practice is, right? The personnel policies of the you know, judiciary uh, yeah. applies to the employees. Yeah. Um, um, so um, here we go. Um, and then the last part there, when it completes, the board of directory, directors having the authority to resolve um, matters about complaints about programming operation events or matters under the jurisdiction of the board. He says that seems to leave the responsibility ambiguous and could lend uh, to a difference of opinion on which of the two entities, the, I think the director, uh, and the board. Uh, maybe it should read, the board shall have the authority to resolve the matter, which may include delegating responsibility for the resolution of the matter to the director. But I will just clarify, like yeah. if it comes, if something's brought to me as a director, yeah, I don't always push it up to you if there's yeah. a complaint about why are we having yeah. this program or can we add this program or something? Right, right. So I, I, I guess, yeah, maybe it would be maybe on the severity of the issue. Yeah, I think yeah, that, that, I think that's a realistic thing. So, so that one, I'm not really sure whether we want to make it that uh, hierarchical. So, I'm still thinking about that. One, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I take it seriously because he is he knows his stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, we he's he's just saying, hey. Clarity would be good. Right. No, I understand. Maybe we clarify, but we don't clarify it the way he said. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm okay with having a little bit of ambiguity. Uh, and I think he really didn't have a heck of a lot more. Um, what do you say about the transportation? Or is that you? Who's that? Uh, yeah, uh, the transportation. That was me. Oh, okay. That was me putting uh, uh, this. Uh, transportation rights, yes. Um, we so, do get, um, so for some folks, you know, we do chart, we do get donations. We haven't set a set town, a set transportation price, but with the fact that the SIG, the service incentive plan for transportation ended, um, I think it would be something to consider, you know, during, um, yeah. for, I mean, most of the time we get donations from folks anyway, yeah. so it's not a big deal, but, um, we no, have, the top of the policy. Yeah, because we have to also offset, you know, I mean, we have a, I think for this fiscal year, I think we're at $3,000 for transportation budget, which is minimal. Like, uh, so if something breaks or paying for gas or whatever, it comes out of that. But, um, you know, I just kind of went uh, like ball parking it from where we were last year. So, you know, in the past, Jennifer, when we went on trips, everybody contributed, it was, let's say, $3. You know, yeah. well, we we used we used to get the van from Risley, yeah. and uh, he didn't he didn't charge the center for using the van. Uh, we were required to do as we put. Yeah, we like gas. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you do. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, and nobody complained about that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I feel like what I really want to do is get. Get more eyes on this stuff, yeah. But mm -hmm. I'd like to, I'd like to move forward. Maybe as a goal, get this on our springtime meetings, mm -hmm. uh, because it, it, you know, changing our agreement would, you know, need, would would need a town meeting yeah. approval. Can you send me a copy of that? I think yeah. you have access Go from the Google. Yeah. Uh, it was shared uh, before. Yeah, it was shared before. Um, um, and there we go. Trevor McDaniel. Uh, actually, actually, no. Can you? Can, can um, you send a different email? Sure. So uh, T. McDaniel. At, oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. Yep. There I am. Oh. Yeah. Just my time. Okay. Do you want to send it to everybody? Yeah. Doc. Give it to me. Okay. And what team is it for you? I guess I'm Murphy G. at Donaldson. 
Second one down for the. Which one? Do you want to refund? Sure. Well, I just yeah. don't know where it is in the thing. Yeah, no, it's, it's in the uh, South County Senior Center uh, town. Okay. Um, it's in. Share anyway with that. Yeah. Lee Murphy, you're not on my good phone. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so oh, yeah. I can find it uh, here. Um, it is. In a folder called South County Senior Center Document for the oh, nice. <laughs> So um, it's. Yeah, yeah, it was just finally the link to it again. Uh, yeah. Well, no, we got an update and not everything saved on my uh, favorite. So. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. That just happened uh, yesterday. No, mm -hmm. oh, very good. All right. So, um, yeah. uh, I guess for all words, um, I know Margaret is. Sort of temporary. Yeah, yeah, she's busy. She's been she's working very on busy. <laughs> um, I, to me, the what? great thing about getting her to look at she's so she's also I think familiar. She worked in one of the three towns of the earth. Or I think I saw. Uh, okay. Oh, I make some reference. Yeah, Andrea Lamas lived in Buffalo for us. But she's been in so many towns, you know, um, and I would really value her um, sure. input. Yeah. And I don't know who to ask him here to come to the students to get to the yeah. so yeah. so I was going to yeah. yeah. send it to our yeah. and just kind of have her get some eyes on what That'd be a great legal, idea. legal uh -huh. our way, that kind of thing, responsibility, just to get some, if we're going to start moving forward, you have to look at it anyway, right. so maybe just talk to her and then but, Chris yeah. and um, yeah. Because it's like, yeah, so becoming a district yeah. might not be the best idea for us. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's going to it might be better. I think this might be a better, yeah. and then 10 years from now, let's look at it. Exactly. you know, I also buy a I guess and so. Then, yeah, then we yeah. Say that. And then we manage. Well, that's, we that's a thing. Yeah. And then we hire people yeah. and we don't do a town hall. No. Well, <laughs> we, we, no. Yeah. That's what I mean. No, it's a lot of Because our funding is centralized from the network. Yeah. So we, uh, the ability to purchase yeah. in this agreement yeah. is yeah. contingent on yeah. getting yeah. agreements. We're still in that. Oh, I did that. We're still having a hard time. Sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. We're still having a hard time. And I think it's going to get a little difficult to. I'm so sorry about that. It's like that's a shush thing. It would be a way of buying a building, yeah. and then the only commitment Sunderland is making is for its share of the payments. Right. And here, if it's only made for the share, share. And I, it helps get around that. I have a question. So, yeah. is, this gonna, is, the, is the consortium going to be a 501c3? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, because I'm just trying to figure out, like, I think um, it's more like the, the host like, town piece is going to be like we are now with the fiduciary if you feel to end doing that. So, it, I guess for me, when you talk about adding a treasurer role to it, it's interesting because it's really over Okay. As far as I can. Because I'm just trying to figure out, like, how does that work? Because, like, <laughs> I work directly with the town accountant who runs the report. Yeah. So it's, you know, um, I think and I give yeah. all the yeah. data to all of you on the board, but not one of you. So. Yeah, we, okay. no, I, I think, I think as, it, that's why I was asking. Let's like, yeah. this treasurer thing real. And it's real in the sense that, yeah, you have to have a treasurer. Um, and it's real in the sense that that person is technically the person, the point person on the board for the uh, for the budget and the you know the day to day like what's in our bank account. But, but that yeah. person is not the accountant, and that person is not the director. So but it's the a, other thing is I don't know how much money is in our bank account day to day. Yeah. Because it's like I can yeah. monthly and, 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 and the bill. So it's like I don't know. But they would be able to at any point go. Or your accountant, could you write a report for me 
on like budget versus actual. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of the more relevant. Yeah. Thing. Okay. Not necessarily how much money is in the bank. No. Yeah. We. <laughs> uh, she sends those reports monthly to me. Right yeah. Now, so. Yeah. And that's. And that, um, and my guess is you just share yeah. that with the treasurer. The treasurer might have like yeah. a Step. More closely, so yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I feel yeah. like we just yeah. the, the state, you know, the state, but yeah, more yeah, 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 you know, for each town on the board as, you know, like a COA representative. Or yeah. And we talked about decision making. So it's about who can get together and make a unilateral decision without other members from the board or the website or however yeah. you want to talk with the top rep. Right? Because I think that is the big piece of that. And then it's like, well, they have a lot of Yeah. 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 Oh, we're back on that. No, 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 yeah. And and we will figure out a way to build it for less than fifty thousand dollars, fifty million dollars. Yeah. That that I think I'm I'm yeah, the town will go for it. Yeah, that town will go we're so we're not really selling three that. Three towns. Price. So maybe yeah, we'll we twenty five percent. No, no, we, no we're, we're not it's not gonna cost us fifteen million. Yes, yeah. 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 That, can we go on to the um the other the policy because yes, we, yes, we need to get the policy uh in the, the so um if you pull up the last document i handed out um i wanted you all to vote on it so this is taken from a spreadsheet on um the federal drug and alcohol website that was given to me by pbta i filled it in with our details the, um, Trevor made a comment that uh, certain things were not included. We didn't incorporate. Uh, I think, um, yeah, we didn't include mushrooms in here. So what are what psilocybin? Is that what you're called? I don't know what the the technological term. What's the term? Magic mushrooms. I I Google will tell us. Yeah. Any of those. Um, so I can add that. <laughs> Okay. But this is specific. This is what the but this is what the FTA of the Federal Transportation Authority has on in their thing, so they don't even put that. So my well, my questions are yes. Do we um so this is the, so we don't really have a lot of policies for this outcome senior center. So we need to have this because we are so where I'm, is this not a, Covered by the town. A uh, town doesn't have policies on this. If they do, I have no idea where to find it. We would have policies. It would be part of the personnel policy. It, it like, is in Waitley, the uh, drug and alcohol. Yeah. So that's driving. Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah, especially for vehicles. Okay. Yeah, so can we, so I'm just wondering, would it fall? My my question was, would it fall under the fiduciary person, the uh, town that's managing our employees well, we policy could, or would right. it be our own separate could be on our own separate I, one and then I, still I, use the institution I don't think ours conflicts with it. Just for no, no, I'm sure it's not members. No, this, sure. so this is just for people driving the senior center vehicles. So you know sometimes I drive yeah. senior center vehicles that include all of the staff. But the reason that I, I'm doing this is um as I mentioned in a few meetings before we are partnering with the PBTA on different projects. The PBTA has asked us to, um, they put in a grant to try to increase transportation in part of our area, which yeah. includes the Sunderland area, like Sanderson Place, um, and some of the apartment complexes that, you know, where the seniors live, um, you know, on the fixed route. Yeah. They received a grant um, through the state, which includes not just our senior center, but the Amherst senior center. So transportation would start at the banks, community center, go to Leverett, which doesn't have any transportation. And we do have seniors from Leverett who come to center here. Um, then it would go 
from there to Cliffside Apartments to Sugarloaf because there can be a um, a transfer with the FRT if need be or picking up people from there, going up to Sanderson Place and then going from there to the Ulmer Transportation Center, then to Bay State Franklin. Yeah. So it would give us um, folks who need to go to medical appointments up at Bay State Franklin mm -hmm. an opportunity through our area going up. So how we partner is we would cover one day a week of transportation. They talked about splitting it, whether it's Amherst and us could do half a day on a Tuesday and a Thursday or a full day. So I opt in for a full day for um, doing that with a driver because Tuesdays and Thursdays are not our busy days oh, okay. where we don't have to enhance Let's fitness. Let's on the staff. Yeah, so staff would be available. But number one, number two, it provides, it tries to reduce some of the transportation issues we have with getting over the border from Sunderland to Greenfield for medical appointments. That's been our biggest challenge other than getting people from Wheaton and Deerfield going south, which we've been able to address, but the FRTA hasn't been on board with that That's because right. they don't have the staff drivers. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, um, we're working with uh, PBTA is driving, MVP is driving, we're driving, and Amherst Senior Center is driving. So we've got all of these. And they're driving a bus or driving? We're driving a van. Thing. It's um, You don't need a CDL. Right. So our mm -hmm. staff, so Tom and Chris went for the training um, for that this past Wednesday. They were in Springfield and they drove, drove the route fully. So they fully trained on their avenues. They um they asked for a even though they're current employees, they wanted a PBTA style drug and alcohol test, which I sent them for yep. on Friday. Yep. We are not so initially we're paying this up front, we're getting reimbursed for all of the time through the You're grant. Right. So we're gonna be sending a bill to the PBTA. Okay. In addition, um, so one of the things that we looked at is Chris do other grants through the SIG transportation grant have been getting an additional five hours a week. So this will, the PBTA will cover eight hours of time. Okay. So we're not paying additional. It's Chris is out of the office, but technically what we used our transportation options before was asking people, do they have additional issues in the, you know, like it's kind of a conversation, um, like if you're on a bus and you start up a conversation, you're more apt to tell somebody about issues. So we're able to mm -hmm. see if someone needs additional services. Yeah. So my questions are yes. around like, is there an MMA between our drivers and our employees? Whose insurance covers who? PBTA uh, covers everything. There must be a um, an MMA that says that, right? Somewhere. Or, so or, I mean, I mean, uh, agreement. Yeah, agreement. We're, yeah, we're we're gonna have that so set up. So we want to see that, yeah. and I want to get that uh, to the dear field for legal. Just make sure that legal. we're covered. Yep. And no problem. The same with this. If we can just um, make sure that everything that we have is covered here and, and if not like we should add something to our policy sure. book or just add this you, to our is, policy book yep that's, that's not a problem we don't have to vote on this today right and we just get get them just to have everybody make sure that we're all maybe even have pete look at it or something to say hey does this look what is the kosher yeah, yeah. Do we have everything covered or should we or i'm missing something or should we add something to our policy that we're missing here that's yeah. covered here just so that everybody is like there isn't a question when there is an accident yep. or a, or an issue, um, we know exactly who who's responsible. Exactly. Did the plate not start until September 30th? So I okay. think I'm yeah. Um, Paul's getting me all the information, uh, so I will that then the follow the email. Paul. PBTA. Paul Burns, Paul Burns is the right. um the the assistant uh, administrator. Right. The, or the boss. I thought Sandra was the boss. Sandra, awesome. yeah, Sandra's the boss. One of the big wigs. So. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's the second in charge. Okay. And he works with all of this stuff. And in addition, with this partnership, you know, with in, with us, the whole reason all these things came to fruition was through um, the Mass in Motion grant stuff that we started with to address transportation and food insecurity in our right. region. And yeah. So um, the PBTA has really been on board with all of this. Um, so we've been able to expand to try to address that. Um, 
The other piece to that is we are, as I mentioned earlier, we're looking to get an additional van to replace this 2011. We just started, you know, it's it's, cut, it's basically reached its end of life. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we look at certain yeah. pieces. So to get an additional one, tip -top, tip -top. yeah, to get an additional one, um, we're partnering with the PBTA, so we will not have to put in a match for the town. So there will be no no match there um the pbta will I'm, I'm getting all the details to see how all that works but basically if you do it under a regional transit authority there's no additional charge so they may technically own it um from talking with mike squagundo who, who was the westfield um director he was sharing that basically you just maintain it and provide the insurance and they pay for everything so you know they pay for the vehicle so they okay. technically might be owned by that but it's, um, it's, yeah. it's that. You, yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know what your thoughts are on moving forward with that because the grant closes in the middle of October. We decide. It seems like an opening. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, there's a lot of moving pieces, and I just yeah. want to make sure that we are thinking about cost and our exposure and insurances and all that. Yeah. Stuff. I just want to make sure like the business part of it is... Square. Yes, we'll have all the agreements in, and I will have all those details. Um, yeah. Oh, definitely. That's yeah. not just that's right. not just a me thing. No. Um, yeah. right. This that's, that's... project uh, for for this particular thing just came up. All the details in between, like we've had meetings every week, and you know, or every other week, and some of it wasn't shared until after our last meeting. Mm -hmm. until last and, yeah. and the other meetings were just the feasibility discussion. So. Um, you know, it was adding that onto our agenda. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm always happy to have a quick meeting anytime on Zoom or something. Sure. Meeting approval or sign or sign something. Once you have all that, I'm like, more than happy to do that. That'd so, be great. yeah. Um, yeah. I can send you the digital copy of this. Yeah, that'd be great. So you can send that to Lisa. Yep. That'd be um, awesome. You can have Pete look at it. And yeah. You can ask Margaret look at it. So yeah, just to make sure that your, um, our our umbrella. Yeah. Sure. And, and uh, I'll get the MOU from uh, or from Peter Burns, yeah. and then right. um, the other piece is uh, getting you the information after the open house on the second. Yeah. Um, the other concerns about when when are you looking to have the consortium piece finalized so that way we can uh, bring it to town meeting in the um, spring. Well, um, I think we should keep pushing it as, yeah. as much as possible. I think once it gets to budget season, none of our admins are going to give us the time of day on that. Yeah. Right? So that starts we've done, end of January, December, November, yeah. December. Yeah, it starts in earnest in February. Right. Yeah. Uh, we, so we've got to see about getting their attention earlier than that mm -hmm. okay. uh, on this particular thing. And then, uh, so my next step with Pete is going to be well, we're getting the other towns to look at it, but. Um, What's our schedule for getting this on town meeting? Yeah. And he's already thinking, they're already thinking about that. So right. This would be so I don't know if we need to mention that to Christopher and to Margaret. I'm sure. Um, uh, on that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, our homework is to take that next little step, whatever it happens to so be. So, we have a document. So we start with that. Yeah, start with that. And, and you can let, you know, let them know, I guess, yeah. you're trans with it. You know, we're thinking this might be uh, something we want to have okay. at our town meeting yeah. in April. So, uh, then I think they'll, they'll appreciate that. <laughs> That's yeah. all. Yeah. Well, I don't see people getting well, worried about finances and all to see what, what impacts that. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and are these, um, I assume all the board members are volunteers. So, there shouldn't be a cost associated with that, right? Yes. There's no, yeah, we're not paying our board of directors. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so it, it, it could change very little. Oh, right. it's really? only changes it's that amount of have, I'm sorry, because we've been a few different meetings um, at this point. Did we have in there that we were going to change the percentages based on usage or I think based we, on census information? I think it is in there based on. Um, because I know what you're talking about, frontier census. stuff. Yeah. I think it should be census because that's how we get our formula fund money. Um, um, and Right, this usage to go up and down depending. Yeah, it's based, and with older adults, it's based on that. And then, um, no. yeah, the other thing too is once our grant cycles end, um, you know, as, as Camille brought up, you know, looking at different cost analysis and 
my professional experience has been using the mean to figure out the average cost for certain programs versus others. Mm -hmm. And then also not just looking at what we do, looking at surrounding centers, because I know a lot of our seniors travel yeah. to other centers to utilize their services sure. as well for some of the exercise classes. Yeah. Um, or other needs. What percent drive here versus A lot of people drive here, but actually, hold on. Um, I can pull it up at the end of the meeting when I bring up the my senior center. It just it showed. Uh, I was curious if it's five percent or ten percent or. Um, I can tell you. I just don't want to. So you say you say probably do anything. Sorry. Well, I don't want to. I found the enforcement part. Yeah. Um, right. Operating costs for the first fiscal year next following the effective date of this agreement. Mm -hmm. And for every fiscal year thereafter, shall be apportioned to the member towns on the basis of the respective average senior member usage. Yeah, so that's what it's, I mean, we can change that. I think we should change it based on census data yeah. because Very you cool. can have because we also because we, here's the thing we also get people from other communities, mm -hmm. so you can't just base it on. So get that we can't send a bill to left. Right. Right. <laughs> or to it, but. We can have a different cost structure for, for, for but so if we, if we were to do that, take change member usage to uh, federal census population. Yeah, I don't think we know any tracking where people are from. Yeah, the morning, morning, morning. Morning. Yeah. Well, we do have that for memberships. We yeah. can have that on EDF yeah. groups, like because that's how I pull the weekly data. Sure. The, um, you know, for the most part, with with all, all of those, we've been able to break it down. So. so you know, our towns do a census every year. Yeah. So, so, so you want to do it by town? Well, here's the thing. So our grant money for the formula fund grant is based on the, the federal census. So that's a 10-year guide. Yeah. If we do this annually with, with this, we're looking at it every year. It's, it's a lot of, it's a full yeah. year. Okay. Right. <laughs> I think, or if you want to break it down to every five years, yeah. but I think every 10 is based on board with what our, our state money right. is from. We're not rolling it fast. Um, well, see, we were thinking we do we do it the same as we kind of do frontier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, so but but there. I think it's a, maybe it's a little bit more straightforward. Yeah. And the school choice kids coming in from outside are they're making a, their towns are making a contribution yeah. under law. That's the difference here. We can't really force contributions other than like this class costs three dollars a month. For a member and ten dollars for a non member, or for yeah, you can or, differentiate. You can differentiate. Um, and, and you know, I haven't really been doing that per se. I mean, like most of our stuff has been free because of the grants we've received. Yeah. But um, you know, there are some centers that we charge. You know, the higher rated fee for members, non members. But like for or you know, but the thing is, is like um, places like Leverett or Conway. They don't have an actual physical, tangible senior center to regularly use. So that's why, you know, we've been inviting and open to have people come here. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but if there's a place that has an active senior center, like they're from Hadley or from Amherst, then you can maybe charge them more versus someone yeah, that doesn't have one. Somewhere that refers to a policy that we have somewhere, a policy on, on that. Uh, well, yeah, it's your chance. Yesterday was 90 uh, degrees. We have a participation. Yesterday was day four, the All residents at least 60 years old or others per the participation policy in a member town is eligible to participate. Fees may be charged for participation. Yeah. Um, programs or services provided under federal state grant funding may have different criteria. So if the participation under federal grant means you have to accept someone for any time. But we should have a we should have a particip participation policy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and I don't know that we I have we one. Have my to. note here is Jen is working to put our policy in writing. We'll link it here when the draft is ready. Jen's um, working on a lot of projects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Jen's been a little overwhelmed yeah. because right. she's been adding the feasibility project on top of regular yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's um, thing. So participation by non-member towns. Huh? This is what it says. Yeah. Residents at least 60 years old or others for the participation policy in non-member towns may participate in programs and activities if space permits. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. Which is, I think, fair enough. Yeah. 
And that's exactly what we are doing. Maybe yeah. so. Um, so that is probably going to the, the would probably be in the participation policy that yeah. you prioritize members, people from member towns, but you don't exclude people from non-member towns uh, if if you've got room. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, I think that's very reasonable. We've been so we just made the participation policy that is consistent with that. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. Yeah. So uh, if you put the word policy in the search block, you get to those two parts of that if, agreement. If, right. if I send you all... That's if, not, a, yeah, that's not as uh, urgent as the other things that are on your plate, so yeah. I'm not pushing on that. Well, one of the things that I did want to ask is, um, um, you know, if I send you individual emails, or maybe you can just address it at the next meeting, the priority list, the things that I'm working on and what takes more precedence over others. Yeah. You know, because it's been grant reporting, it's been a lot of work and then the different yeah. classes and getting people activated to everything, and just yeah. being in all the okay. ways. Well, if you ever just want to have like a one on one, and, uh, and you're like, I own the work with for priorities, I should be able to do that in the short term. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Are we uh, still going with the meeting or do we need to do the meeting to adjourn? No, we need to the next day. And uh, we want it. We want it to be something after October second. That weekend after October second is the fifth and sixth. But I don't know if we're still looking at a weekend or. Trevor's getting ready for annual town meeting. The whole weekend? No, weekend probably not. <laughs> I don't know. But that's um, what I'm well, then uh, around. Uh, and then. We're doing summer news. Uh, Bruner's got a, a rumor. Luna has an appointment at one o'clock. So as long as we have a hard stop by noon, sure. it's fine. Okay. But, uh, but is it? Let yeah, me see. Yeah, is it a uh, warrant week? Yeah, it's a warrant week. Oh, you guys are kidding. Sorry. Okay. Warrant week means um, I usually don't get out on um, early, and but I can get one of the But the uh, the subjects for the meeting will be. I mean, in some ways, it's the same as this one. Uh, if you're discussing, we'll, but we'll have some more input. Yeah. Source Yem, hopefully, we'll have some more input from uh, some more towns. Um, and well, yeah, the, 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 the it's going to be, yeah, if we're going to get that information from the October 2nd meeting, so we'll have all that data to share on uh, Saturday. And then, um, do we? I'll have all this to all of you prior to you. Right. That meeting. Yeah. I don't know if you can get it. Like, this. Yeah. So we should have this approved by then, hopefully. What's we'll 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 the second is going to be the open house. Open house. Um, yeah. For for the whole thing for the whole. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 The, the, it's the it's all into coming in. Okay. And, well, yeah. so it's it's a question and answer. It's not the three town meeting that we were yeah. talking about. Yeah. So we should should we pick a date for that too? What's or do we need to wait until the presentation is done? I think, by it. I, I think yeah. we'll need more. I think um, we'll need to have the drawings and everything. We need like drawings that. and stuff like that to okay. you know, to get that not that level. Of thing. So I I would say uh, if we can have it on the fifth, okay. it would it be better to do it in the afternoon after the first appointment? Would yeah. having the morning free be better for you? Uh, <laughs> uh, so I I'm okay with Saturday well, afternoon. Afternoon's not great for me. Oh, not great for okay. me. Okay, we can do we can do uh, the morning. You want to do ten o'clock like usual? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and so then, that'll be the fifth. And then like, yeah, and I'm trying to make it eleven thirty. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Right. She sighed and she went. You guys talked about a meeting. She went. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And and the agenda, as far as I can tell, it's going to have kind of the same three items. Only we're going to expect to vote on this. Yes. And we're going to expect to mostly uh, and maybe be able to make a decision about what do we recommend for the two sides. Yes. That that's the biggest thing that's recommended. Where, where is that Q and A being held? Um, it's here. Here. Yeah. And okay. advertising it's going it. To be standing um, remote. I hope so. Uh, uh, nine uh, to three uh, or nine to twelve. And then I've got a small group of some seniors who are coming after the brand and one of them um, to give some input on what you want in a senior center. So we got I'm not going to be able to see it for that. Huh? Oh, oh yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, what's that? The, that Q&A is not the time that I can go. No, so, I, yeah. I don't think most people, I mean, like, right. a lot of you won't be able will to you be, Will you be videotaping it? I can. 
because uh, I think that would that would be, be good. That would well, be, even if it's just pushing this up in the corner, yeah. uh, so that it'll pick up faces, it'll pick up people, and uh, if they're can we legally? So here's a question: Can we legally do that without people knowing? I mean, I can put up a sign saying we're recording today. Posted in the public meeting. Posted. Posted. Yeah, I think it's a public meeting. It's not a meeting. It's not a meeting. Yeah, it's not a board. No votes. But it's posted all over the town. We posted it. I believe I dropped the town. I think you're more welcome to be there to be a posted meeting. It's true, right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, one of you is here and nobody else needs you're allowed to record things and as long as you let people know. Yeah, yeah just okay. No, it's 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 because that, that would be valuable to so me to be able to hear that uh feedback before. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. It's a three hour meeting I'm just letting Or it's I it's, a, it it's a walk in the thing. So I don't Will like, there be any point where they're kind of presenting things to people so how chris explained it to me was that it was going to be like you know people come in and ask questions and then, <laughs> i don't know if we're doing the poster board because it's something i like that um abacus suggested yeah was taking sticky notes and you know putting it like what do you want to see so like that would be we could get we're i'm gonna have post-it notes because then we can put the three different locations on a poster board and people can walk up and go this is where i want it to be mm -hmm. um so i've got big post-its i can put on the right. wall okay so, so the, the feedback is going to be in in sort of written form yes so yeah. it may not be may not be worth recording there are going to just think i mean it's already location based so people from different well, it's gonna, different people well it's going to be location based but it's also going to be not just not just mm -hmm. that but it's also going to be you know what do you want to see in a center uh, yeah, so they're going to go over all of those things with people yeah so, you know sure. people have input on that um, yeah okay so they are collecting this the data the um the feedback mm -hmm. in the capturing it in some way yes and uh, cool. presumably they yeah. will be Maybe they'll share the way that they capture it with us. And well, that's what we ask, ask Chris. Ask him, yeah, and, and ask him on what timeline. Yeah. Because that's. I would like it by Friday afternoon, so I could have Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what yeah. my Okay, okay. So you're already aware. Oh yeah. Plus, I'm looking at you know potentially if we record, yeah. probably yeah. I put up signs just saying that we're being recorded today. You know that things here are being recorded for uh, sure. informational purposes. Then you know people will be aware of that. So, yeah, um, it's really important not to be thought. So October fifth is our date. At, when are you doing an adjournment? Uh, I would entertain a motion. You should be adjourned. Second. Uh, those in favor? Getting you aye. 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 Aye.